I see a, a gentleman taking a picture with his gentleman in his hand, sending it to my wife. Did your ex send you a naked photo? Yes, he did. It just leads me to one thought and she's talking to another man. And, but not as much as I've caught him in his phone. We were having sex one night and he rolls over. We haven't clothes on yet. And he's texting another woman. He loves her. No, I was sleeping with Mr. Molinax Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> on a weekly schedule? Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable revelation right off the bat. Mr. Thomas states he has been trying to obtain a DNA test for 15-month-old Hannah Thomas for over a year as he has been mandated to pay child support despite signing the birth certificate under what he claims were false pretenses. Just wait, the drama intensifies. Mr. Thomas, you claim you've been petitioning the court system for a DNA test for 15-month-old Hannah Thomas for more than a year now. Now you've been notified that you will be paying court because you signed the birth certificate but claim it was under false pretenses. This moment changes everything. Mr. Thomas recounts his shock upon receiving a child support notification which he was not expecting, leading to a confrontation about the timeline of the pregnancy and his involvement. The next part reveals more unexpected truths. Two weeks ago, Your Honor, I went to the mailbox thinking I'm getting a check and I end up getting a paper from child support saying that half my wages is gonna be took. Your Honor, I don't mean to cut him off, but that is a lie, what he's saying. He knew that he was gonna pay child support because I received a medical card. I also received cash assist. I have to cooperate with child support in order to receive those assistance. The plot thickens significantly here. The couple debates the time Line of Miss Zachary's pregnancy, revealing inconsistencies and gaps in their stories about when Mr. Thomas was informed and his reactions, deepening the conflict over paternity. What happens next is even more jaw-dropping. Um, August, we got back together, you know, um, towards the end of August, beginning of September, she told me, she, oh, I feel pregnant. We went to buy like maybe four or five pregnancy tests that Your day. Your Honor, I found out that I was pregnant September 18th, and I went to that doctor's appointment, and I came home, I handed him the papers. This is my results at the doctor. This is my proof of pregnancy. And here. what did he say when you he didn't have much to say. He just said... No, Your Honor, I, I never received any paperwork, Your Honor. A pivotal turn in the narrative. A doctor's appointment reveals Ms. Zachary is carrying twins and advises her to quit smoking, leading Mr. Thomas to realize the pregnancy is much further along than he had been led to believe, intensifying his doubts. Watch what unfolds next. It's a game changer. It was my first time ever having children, and I didn't know at the time that I was even twins. We went to the doctor, maybe probably was about three or four weeks later, and the doctor was telling her, yeah, you need to stop smoking cigarettes. He was telling me, like, look, you need to be on or about smoking cigarette. And he showed me the paperwork and it said 15 or 17 weeks or something like that. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, y'all. No. A critical moment of realization. Mr. Thomas recounts a critical moment when he receives paperwork showing a much longer pregnancy duration than expected, leading him to suspect deceit and consider the implications of their relationship break. You won't believe what's coming up. And at that time, out. when you were at the appointment, how many weeks did you... Uh, she was supposed to be around nine weeks. At this, this is going through my head. And it's just everything that's been building up, building up and building up like, okay, she couldn't have been three to five weeks when she first told me, you know? That means she deliberately lied to me about the, the whole pregnancy. I was with him. I was honest about everything with him. The tension reaches a boiling point. The relationship strain is highlighted by arguments over fidelity and the implications of their break, with Mr. Thomas feeling betrayed and questioning the entire foundation of their relationship. The confrontation heats up even more next. It I didn't just led check. you I back to the check. time when you were on a break. I triple check, Can I please Honor. I did it in my Your head. Honor. I looked at the we, doctor. Your Honor, we was on I'm a like, break. hold on, wait a minute. And let me triple break, check. And, and it led you back to the time when you were on and the it, break. And it led me back to, Lord, you can't be telling me this is the exact we were time. On a break when I was with the other guy in July. Your Honor, we got back together the end of August. That was a dirty fight, Your Honor. We've been I together almost six years. Child. A significant decision under controversial circumstances. Mr. Thomas describes signing the birth certificate under specific conditions, expecting no involvement from the biological father, encapsulating the complexities and emotional weight of his decision. The drama continues to unfold in the following scenes. And then you signed the birth certificate when you were at the hospital, am I correct? Yes, I did. I had some, uh, She had her sister come get the children all until she had the baby. I was there. It was no problem. This was the agreement from the beginning. If the guy that I believe is Hannah's dad, if he didn't have any part of any part of anything, I would sign a birth certificate and Hannah would never know it. And I had no problem with that because I'm not going to let just someone come in and destroy my family like that. A surprise witness throws another curveball. A witness, Mr. Thomas's uncle, suggests Mr. Thomas might not be the father based on the child's appearance and Ms. Zachary's actions, adding another layer of doubt and complexity to the case. The court's decision up next will leave you stunned. Ms. Zachary says you weren't loyal to her too. Were you cheating? 
Really? Your Honor, I go to work, I come Really? Home. That's what I do, Your Honor, okay. every day. Mr. Hill, you are Mr. Thomas's uncle. Yes. What do you know about this situation? You know, this whole situation is just crazy, like fighting to the arguing and stuff like that. I don't think that he is the father of Hannah. You don't? The climax of the courtroom drama arrives. The DNA test results are finally revealed. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Thomas, you are her father. <laughs> Can you believe what just unfolded? The court session kicks off with the judge laying down the law about the need for a paternity test for little four-month-old Charles. It seems the marriage of the couple involved is teetering on the edge of disaster due to some serious daddy doubts. The husband, Mr. Broussard, lays it all out about his marital woes fueled by infidelity and trust issues, while the wife, Mrs. Broussard, is crushed by her husband's denial of their son, pinning her hopes on the DNA results to clear the air. Brace yourself, because this is just the tip of the iceberg. You opened your case hoping the court will grant you a paternity test so you can prove you are not the father of month old baby Charles. You say your one-year marriage to the defendant is on the verge of because of paternity doubt and you need this test to save your family. You say your husband's refusal to accept has left you devastated and your marriage in shambles. Just when you thought it couldn't get more intense, Mr. Broussard dives into his saga of suspicion, starting with the mystery of two glasses on his table, which sparked his doubt about baby Charles's paternity. The plot thickens with constant bickering and a crumbling trust, all stirred up by nasty neighborhood gossip that questions whether he's the real dad. Mrs. Broussard counters with tales of miscommunication and simple misunderstandings about guests. But wait, there's more drama ahead that'll make your jaw drop. I say my marriage on the verge of collapse due to the infidelity, trust issues, and all the I discovered. And you need this test today. You're on the birth certificate. You are this child's legal father. Yes, I am. But you need this test so desperately if you are not the biological father of this child want to have your name removed from this birth certificate. Correct. Get ready for a plot twist. Mr. Broussard unveils a chart in court to illustrate the trail of clues that led him to mistrust his wife, highlighting mysterious incidents like an unexplained energy drink and a suspicious extra cup at their home. Mrs. Broussard explains away these oddities as harmless oversights involving a family member and a visitor needing medication. Hang on, because the story takes an even wilder turn next. This is a chart I put together. This is the first reason why that gave me my doubt that little Charles is not mine. Two glasses on my table. I just got off work and basically I walked in. The cups look freshly poured. You still can see the water dripping off of it because it's going to room temperature. Why is there another cup here? So I don't know. I said, well, you had in my house then. She didn't know. She said, I don't know. Yes. Things are heating up now. The discussion shifts to Mrs. Broussard's questionable communication with her ex, fueled by a rumor spread by a local kid about a plot to replace Mr. Broussard. Denials fly as Mrs. Broussard attributes the malicious gossip to her ex's troublemaking antics, which prompts Mr. Broussard to confront the supposed homewrecker. Buckle up, because the next revelations are even more startling. The rumors. I am well known in my community, and I felt kind of disrespected. A child came to me and said the ex-boyfriend had told me that him and your wife are still communicating, want to have a family, a baby together. They about to push you out the picture. What? Yeah, so... Well, see, that's the thing about kids, though. They don't tell it, honey. She was still talking to the ex, and they was gonna push you out the picture. I have a family. You're not going to believe this bit. Mr. Broussard recounts the scandalous discovery of risque photos from Mrs. Broussard's ex on her phone, which he sees as undeniable proof of her ongoing affairs. She admits to the indiscretion, but claims it was a moment of weakness in response to her husband's own missteps. As scandalous as this is, stick around because what comes next is sure to stun you even more. Me and Helen was, uh, I believe, in the living room watching TV on one of my days off from work, and her phone went off, so I vibrated, flashing and dingling. In the corner of my eye, I see a, a gentleman taking a picture with his gentleman in his hand, sending it to my wife. Did your ex send you a naked photo? Yes, he did. Now this is where things get really tangled. The judge scrutinizes the timeline of the alleged affair and its possible role in the conception of baby Charles. Mrs. Broussard owns up to the fling with her ex, but insists it occurred after Mr. Broussard's alleged timeline. This part of the saga is a real doozy, but the courtroom shocker that's up next is an absolute must-see. Where are you all from? Sacramento. Sacramento, California. 2017, the temperature was 96, 79, 85, and here is December. The actual temperature ranged between 30 degrees, pretty chilly, 
So, Mr. Broussard, you would not have been sweating if it was just 30 to 60 degrees. No, I would not. And for the grand finale, truly something else. The dramatic conclusion unfolds as DNA test results are disclosed. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Broussard, you are the father. Ms. Thayer is in court to potentially save her marriage and assert the paternity of her two children with Mr. Thayer. She hopes to prove that he is the father of her 19-month-old daughter and three-year-old son. This court appearance is her last effort to address trust issues that are jeopardizing their relationship. Just watch how the tension escalates next. Ms. Thayer, you are here today in hopes of saving what is left of your marriage. In doing so, you've summoned your husband, Mr. Thayer, to paternity court to that not only did he father your 19-month-old daughter, Cadence, but also three-year-old son, Matthew Jr. And Mr. Thayer, you say you aptly do not trust your wife and you are prepared to get a divorce today when the results reveal or both kids are not yours. You won't believe what she says next. Amber Thayer discusses the imbalance in how Mr. Thayer treats their children compared to his stepchildren, expressing her pain and the impact of his doubt on their family dynamics. This moment emphasizes the emotional and practical consequences of the paternity uncertainty in their everyday life. The tension keeps building. Stay tuned. For him to say that these aren't his kids, and I have five kids, it's the three oldest kids, better than he treats his own kids, and I don't feel like that's fair. Yeah, in my mind, uh, we're basically separated because we don't sleep in the same room no more. Around each other, she's on her phone. We just sit in, the, sit in the same house and we don't even communicate no more. I don't feel that connection with her or the, or the kids for that matter. This part adds another layer to their complex story. The couple's backstory is revealed where they initially agreed on a non-exclusive relationship due to past hardships, but unexpected pregnancies shifted their relationship dynamics. This context sets the stage for the ongoing trust and commitment issues they face. You won't want to miss what comes next. I didn't know what to say because I wasn't planning on having any more kids. I mean, I had three girls already, so I was already single mom. Well, then you were planning on having another baby. Fail to plan, plan to fail. And, I, and then I believe she so, was pregnant before we even got together. Matt, Matthew was born three weeks early. She told me about three weeks in that she was pregnant. So that's where that doubt comes in for him. This is a pivotal moment in their story. Ms. Thayer describes the conception date of their son, Matthew, linking it to a specific intimate encounter, but the early birth of the child fuels Mr. Thayer's doubts about paternity. The timing of the pregnancy becomes a critical point of contention and suspicion. Things are about to get even more intense. And the reason that I feel that way is because that night he had a hotel party and after his friends left, we stayed and we pretty much had sex about three or four times that night alone. I mean, he knows my conception date. This is not new to him. So your conception date, you say, was around September 10th. So if we calculate, the child should be born somewhere between June 2nd and June 9th. The emotion here is palpable. Emotions escalate as Mr. Thayer expresses his hurt and desire for a family, contrasting with his significant doubts about the children's paternity. This moment reveals his deep emotional investment and the pain caused by the uncertainty over his family's future. The revelation in the next clip will leave you speechless. It hurts. I mean, I love him or I wouldn't have married. He's a person that I want to spend my life with. This is my first child too, Your Honor. I didn't have no kids. I didn't have a family or anything and she was going to give that to me. That's uh, This is something that I really do want. I want a family of my own that I can grow with and I can watch them grow and I can teach them all the things that... And so why do you doubt her so much? Just because of some of the things that she says when we do get in an argument, it brings up the fact that she would sleep with somebody else. The state are incredibly high here. The court delves into Mr. Thayer's doubts about their younger child, Cadence, born during a period of claimed minimal intimacy. This development raises questions about the circumstances surrounding the conception and the strain it places on their already fragile relationship. The following testimony might just change everything. You've asked the court to a lie detector. Yes. We did, in fact, do that. Thank you. All right. I'd like to go to your doubts surrounding that is your younger child. You all have two children. Yeah, because around the time that that, that she was conceived, uh, we weren't really having sex. Find out she's pregnant again, immediately doubt. Yes. The truth comes to light in a shocking way. Mr. Thayer's lack of trust is further exposed when he recounts discovering incriminating text messages, intensifying his fears of infidelity. This discovery is a pivotal moment that shapes his perceptions and actions within the marriage. Keep watching. The twists just keep coming. You really don't trust her. Yes. What in the world has gotten you to the... 
What? Well, I, you can't trust this. I've seen text messages, old times they spent together and how much fun they had. It just leads me to one thought and she's talking to another man. And, but not as much as I've caught him in his phone. We were having sex one night and he rolls over. We haven't clothes on yet. And he's texting another woman. He loves her. This could change their lives forever. The emotional and practical implications of the paternity results are laid bare as Mr. Thayer discusses the potential upheaval in his life and relationships if the children are not his. The outcome of the DNA tests is anticipated with high anxiety, reflecting the potential for dramatic changes in their family structure. The results are next, and you won't believe what they reveal. I'm supporting three of the kids that aren't mine, and I don't want to feel played in this situation to where I'm supporting a whole household and nobody's related to me. Nobody's my seed and carry on my, my legacy. All right, we're going to get it. to the DNA results in just a moment, but first I want to get to the lie. So we did, in fact, um, polygraph expert. Let me have those lie detector results, yes, please. Judge. Thank you. The climax is as unexpected as it is emotional. The climax of the court case occurs with a revelation of the DNA results. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Thayer, you are the father. I told you. One of them, one of the two. I told can you believe that revelation? Ms. Barrett admits to the court that during the conception period, she had multiple sexual encounters with two men, including the defendant, Mr. Mullinax. She is also seeking compensation for baby-related expenses amounting to $779, arguing that Mr. Mullinax should share these costs if he is the father. Brace yourself for Mr. Mullinax's response. During the period of conception, you say you slept with two men multiple times, including the defendant, Mr. Mullinax. Furthermore, you're asking the court to award you $779 dollars for items you to prepare for the baby's arrival. You say you believe Mr. Mullinax also responsible for these expenses because he may be the father. This twist is unexpected. Mr. Mullinax expresses his refusal to bear any expenses for the baby, denying paternity and accusing Ms. Barrett of having multiple partners during the conception period. The audience reacts audibly to the revelations, emphasizing the complicated nature of the relationships involved. You won't believe what Ms. Barrett says next. Mr. Mullinax, you say you refuse to pay any for an unborn child that isn't yours. You deny paternity and claim Ms. Barrett had sex with you, her ex-boyfriend, and several other men, all during the period of conception. Yes. This really complicates things. Ms. Barrett outlines her intimate schedule with the two men, which prompts laughter from the audience. She explains sleeping with Mr. Mullinax from Thursday to Monday and with her ex-boyfriend on the remaining days of the week, which underscores the complex dynamics and the challenge in establishing paternity. The plot thickens with Mr. Mullinax's next bombshell. Yeah, I was sleeping with Mr. Mullinax Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. On a weekly schedule? Yes. Before I even get to that, take me back. How did you meet? I met Mr. Molinax um, through my ex-boyfriend, which he's still married to. Is oh, is an, is my ex-boyfriend's family member. And this is the ex-boyfriend you were sleeping with? Yes. You won't see this coming. Ms. Barrett asserts that she initially told Mr. Mullinax about the pregnancy and believed he was the father because her other potential partner was unavailable, being incarcerated. This revelation adds a layer of emotional complexity and desperation on her part. Mr. Mullinax's skepticism in the next part might surprise you. So was it really about you being Mr. Mullinax was the father or the fact that you just wanted him to be the father because he was available to help you take care of the baby? Because he was available. Listen, because Your I Honor, could... she sent me a text and said she was pregnant. The next day she said she had a miscarriage and then two days later, that pregnant is a again. Lie. So I have I've I've had doubts that. the yes, whole time. Multiple text messages in her phone from other guys talking about when are you going to let me get another one of those world famous. Her reputation around the city was that she was good at things. That's pretty much what a turn of events. Mr. Mullinax doubts his paternity due to Ms. Barrett's other sexual relationships, leading to audience laughter when he attempts to apply mathematics to the likelihood of being the father. His skepticism is met with mixed reactions, highlighting the courtroom's charged atmosphere. But just wait, it gets more controversial. She was pregnant. What was was your reaction? I automatically assumed it wasn't mine because I knew I wasn't the only man she was sleeping. But you knew you could be a possibility, right? A possibility, yeah. The ratio just goes to show, you know, that... The ratio? Yeah, I mean, compared you to her sleeping, how many guys... Yes, ma'am, kind of, because, I mean, if you're sleeping with so many people, how can tell who the baby's dad is just by ultimate But guess. there were two, she says, so that math of 50-50, which is a probability. You'll want to hold on to your seat for this. The DNA results are revealed. Sasha Barrett, unborn child, Mr. Mullinac, you are the father. <laughs>